Hello. In the church tradition, today is known as Holy Saturday, the day between the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection on Sunday. It's a day of waiting in silence. Let's listen together to today's reading. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Holy Saturday reminds me that we must learn how to become a follower of Jesus. His life offers us the pattern for our own life. In the church tradition I grew up in, today had no meaning. It was a day between the great events and the drama of Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, one in which nothing really happened. Jesus was dead and buried. Everyone went home to rest. And so we kept ourselves busy in and around the house as the clock ticked on towards Resurrection Sunday. Saturday was a placeholder, a bus stop. Today brings up so many questions. Why didn't Jesus just rise up immediately? Why did he have to wait? What's the meaning of today? Now this in-between place is often one of pain and of hardship and of suffering for us. We want to get out of this so that we can get to resurrection. This day is here precisely because this is how life is. You experience loss and suddenly everything is out of place. It brings confusion and questions and you don't know where to go. When Jesus' disciples saw him dead on the cross, they ran away in different directions, hiding in fear. So some of them returned to what they knew before. They were disappointed because a Messiah isn't supposed to die. This isn't how life should be. And so maybe they got busy to avoid their agony. Jan Richardson writes on her blog that Lamentations chapter 3 gives us words for today. Let's read it together. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of the Lord's wrath. He has driven me away and made me walk in darkness rather than light. Indeed, he has turned his hands against me again and again all day long. He has made my skin and my flesh grow old and has broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. He has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead. He has walled me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my paths crooked. And then in verse 21, Yes, this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Do you see the contrasting emotions here? The author describes his suffering, his captivity. God drove me into the darkness without any light. God turned his hand against me. God made me sit in the dark and he built around a wall around me which I cannot get out. And yet, the author cannot help but also turn to hope. He recalls that the Lord's love is also around him. His mercy never ends. My hope is in 
the Lord. Now, although these words were written about the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem, we can also attribute them to Jesus' experience in the tomb. Christ, who refers to himself as the temple, was brought to death. He lies in a tomb and in darkness without light. And from our first scripture reading of today, could it be that Joseph and the two Marys also recalled this passage as they waited at the grave? The temptation is to want to skip today, to go to tomorrow, to resurrection. We know what happens in the story, but that's not where we are. The grave, the symbol of suffering, turns into a symbol of life when you discover that that is where God meets me. Jesus cries out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He expresses how we feel in our loss. The reality is that God never leaves us. This is the message of the Bible. This is the good news. Romans 8 says, nothing can separate us from God's love. Not death, not life, not angels or power, or anything now or in the future. In your silence today, use your imagination to sit with the two women at Jesus' tomb and listen to their mourning, their longing, and wait with them, and then become aware of what makes you wait. Your own loss and suffering, your dreams that are over, and sit with it with God. And as you recall what the Lord has done in the past, what hope does it give you for what God may still do? Let us pray together. Lord, when we don't have the answer and everything feels uncertain and confusing, help us to not run away in fear, but to bring it to you. Lord, where we feel unequipped to be with others in their pain and loss, give us the courage to stay with them in compassion, with hope. Lord, thank you that regardless whether we feel it or not, you are always with us. Amen.